It's that time of game. What would you like to see in Adobe Captivate 10? Okay, let's get started here. So I've been uh, working with Adobe Captivate now since version two. Uh, I did skip over version three and four. Uh, I jumped on back on the bandwagon for version five, 5.5. 5. 5. Uh, I did skip over six, but I did use six over at the organization that I worked at. Uh, but I personally bought version seven, version eight and version nine to uh to stay on top of this and of course to start my own e-learning consulting business so i've been working with captivate for a long time i think it's over 10 years now and i've seen a lot of improvements over the years and quite frankly adobe captivate 9 is absolutely the best version so far it, sometimes new versions of software come out and uh because you know uh seriously cripple the uh, user's ability to use it there are still some issues with nine. It's far from perfect. And, you know, this video is just to talk a little bit about what I'd like to see in the next version of Captivate. And, you know, I'm inviting all of you who are watching this video to throw your comments in the comments fields below and let me know what you'd like to see in Captivate 10. We all have different needs, of course. So I'd love to hear what you have to say about that. The very first thing I'd like to talk about with regards to um, my list of things I'd like to see in Captivate 10 is to perhaps consider doing an interface review. Um, I would say that there's a consistency problem with, uh, with Adobe Captivate, and it's not unexpected really, because you know as you add new features and add new capabilities and take some of those capabilities away, um, things do tend to become inconsistent or fragmented. And an example of that is uh, quiz questions. So if I was to add a quiz question right now, now for, for someone like myself who've been using the software for 10 years, uh, some of these changes may seem very normal because uh, it's the evolution that we've experienced. But if you were a brand new user, you might look at this and think, what the heck is this all about? So let me take you through what I'm what I'm seeing or what I think about when I think about this particular issue. So there are several ways that you can add question type slides to your project. So you can do it through the slides drop down icon located on the toolbar. And if I click that, of course, I have uh, several options. I can choose to add a question slide now within this particular question slide i can choose um, graded survey or pretest questions perfect exactly what i might want to do you would maybe expect to also see knowledge check here but in fact knowledge check is located elsewhere from that drop down it has its own entry here and this is probably because knowledge check slides were added in captivate 9 and you know it may look a little bit like an afterthought because of that now there's another way you can add question slides and that's from the quiz drop down menu and if i click the quiz drop down menu i can choose question slide which you would think would include all of those other items and it does no problem uh, incidentally you could also do random question slides from there as well but you can actually choose pretest question slide from here as well and knowledge check. So a little bit of inconsistency here. Another area that's inconsistent as well is if I was going to create a question slide and I was going to create a question pool and then, then I could import gift question files uh, as part of that pool. And if you want to learn about gift format, uh, I'll put a link for it up here. Let's do uh, a quick little uh, five random question slides up on the screen here. We're going to link it to pool one. And just to show you here that if I go to the question pool tab, which I generally keep open, there's an interface interface for question pool manager. 
and I can import gift files. So I can import uh, gift files as my whole quiz. I can import them as part of a question pool. Um, but you know, one of the things that I'd like to see actually is the ability to import a um, a question slide for a knowledge check using gift format as well. And to my knowledge, I don't believe that that can be done. No, it's not available here and not available there. So again, a little bit of an inconsistency. So I can import gift uh, files uh, that contain all my questions for regular question slides. Um, let's see if I can do it for a pretest. Um, so I could do this and no, I can't really do it. I can do import gift format file, load it in, and I probably convert them to pretest questions. But again, it's just a little inconsistent. There's not one way to do all of these things. There's several ways. So it can be a little bit uh, confusing. I'm just going to get rid of these random question slides that I don't actually need here. So that's, I think, needed as an interface review. It'd be nice to uh, just go through as the guys at Adobe do and uh, take a look at everything and say, you know, could we improve on this? Would we, could we write this a different way? Could we use a different phrase? Uh, should it be skipped or should it be next? You know, that sort of thing. So that's, uh, that's all I'll say about that. Another thing I'd like to see is, uh, and this is a small improvement, it's not a huge thing. I'd like to see bring back live preview of rollover effects. This was something we had in version 8 and in previous versions as well uh, for different types of buttons. And now that we've got multi-state objects, and, and really this has been an expansion of that capability, we've lost the ability to see rollover effects in edit mode. Uh, it's a good way to just double check what the rollover effect is without having to click the button and then, of course, go to your properties panel and either choose the object state or to click on state view to preview it. Nice to just kind of see it real quick. Um, but again, it's not a huge thing. It's not a deal breaker. Um, it's not like I'm not going to upgrade to version 10 uh, if that feature isn't brought back. The other area that I'd like to see some improvement, and this is a bigger area for me, it has to deal with paragraph spacing and the ability to add and restart numbered lists. Um, currently, there really is no paragraph spacing available in Adobe Captivate. Here's an example of where uh, paragraph spacing and, and having the ability to restart numbered lists would be a great thing. I've got two columns of uh, information here. I'm just going to select them and I'm going to add a numbered list to these things. So as you can see in the first column I have items 1, 2, and 3 and I carry on in the second column with item 4, 5, and 6. Now of course the renumbering starts because it's a brand new text box. Uh, there is really no way to restart numbered lists perhaps uh, on a different text box or a different slide. Um, you know, in various word processors, you can usually right click that area and choose uh, restart numbering or start numbering from a certain number or letter and continue. The other thing that, and this has more to do with paragraph spacing is, this is fine. This first column here is okay, item one, item two, item three. And of course, if I wanted to double space those, I could certainly do that. And it would make sense. It would almost simulate, or especially if I did something like one and a half spacing, it would almost simulate what paragraph spacing could look like in Adobe Captivate. Unfortunately, if I do the same thing for this second column, where item five and six contain more than one line of text, it doesn't quite work out as nicely. Uh, you end up getting spacing within the items themselves, and that may not be the desired effect. Uh, there are ways around this. You could create multiple text boxes and uh, populate those with each item, and you know, you can make it work. But again, I think the purpose of software is to make our lives simpler, not 
coming up with more complicated solutions. Uh, so that's definitely an issue for me. Now, one of the things that uh, that has jumped out at me a few times as a mild irritant uh, with Adobe Captivate is the using the best fit drop down um, option or the or the um, zoom in option, if you will. Let's click this first line, uh, this first box here, and I'm going to go to three or two hundred percent. Let's say. It's centered on the object that I have selected, which makes sense. If I go to 400%, but with this object selected, it's centered on that object. Again, makes sense. But there's an inconsistency with that. Let's go on to a, a knowledge check question. And I'm going to select the first answer in that uh, particular question. And I'm going to choose 300%. It doesn't bring me to the object, it brings me actually to the top of the slide. So again, there's an opportunity, I believe, to improve that as well. Now the final area I want to talk about that I'd like to see in Adobe Captivate 10 is the ability to customize not only the size of these little radio buttons, or if you're doing so with uh, check boxes as well, let's say choose multiple answers, it switches to check boxes. I'd like the ability to adjust the size. And the reason for that is this. So let's rescale this project. We do that from the modify drop down menu, hit rescale project. And I'm going to change this to a preset size, custom 1920 by 1080. So we're all done here. And it works well. Like if you were to uh, best fit this project, you'll see that everything is kind of adjusted accordingly. The fonts have been increased. You might want to change a few things like, uh, you know, just centering your titles and resizing a few things. But the one thing that doesn't get resized, and this is part of the problem, not that I resize a lot of projects, but if I'm going to go in and take a look at this thing close up and you see the, the check boxes don't resize. I have this large answer now uh, by comparison to what it was, but still this very tiny. Let's go 100%. These check boxes are really tiny. Now, when you're in edit mode, as I am right now, what you're seeing are the flash versions of this. So if I was to publish this for HTML5, you're going to get a different effect. Uh, it's a different looking radio button and checkbox. But it's also going to be incredibly small like this. I think it's about 20 pixels across, 20 pixels squared. And, uh, you know, when you're doing a project that's 1920 by 1080, 20 pixels is going to be really small on the screen. So I'd like the ability to customize the size. And also, too, uh, if we go in real close, you can take a look here. Again, I'll have to move this. There's definitely a certain color and look and feel to this. Let's see if we can preview um, the HTML5 version just for comparison. So again, we've got a very specific look and feel. These are the HTML5 checkboxes. And, uh, you know, if I was to switch this to radio buttons, um, you know, they're, they're okay, but they're really kind of small for this size screen. And what you might want to do is have the ability to customize those. Let's say this particular branding was for a particular company that uses the color uh, green and purple, as an example, uh, having blue check boxes doesn't match their branding. They may want to customize that. And there are solutions for that. Again, it's, it goes back to what the purpose of software is. The purpose of software is to simplify your life, make things easier, not coming up with more complicated, difficult ways to do things. So while I could probably customize a custom multiple choice question, 
Um, you know, the downside of customized uh, multiple choice questions using advanced actions and variables and so on, it's fine, it can be done, but it's very time consuming. So rather than uh, importing, let's say, a bunch of quiz questions into your course in a matter of seconds, you're now going to have to manually create all of those quiz questions and it could take in half an hour uh, or, or longer to do so. Um, so again, the ability to customize the size and the images and the colors associated with radio buttons and checkboxes would be a very welcome addition to Adobe Captivate 10. Guys, if you like the videos that I'm producing for you, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. And if you thought this video was interesting or you want to provide your own two cents as to what you'd like to see in Captivate 10, go ahead and um, put the comments below. And don't forget to give me a thumbs up.